Pastor Al for Baptist Church of Bernalillo, and uh, we're here to do our word with Pastor Al. Uh, just was going over some of the things that the governor just laid out. Uh, we'll try and, I'm going to wait and see what she says and everything, but as of right now, this Sunday, we're good. Um, Monday, the, the new restrictions take place, and we have to kind of scale it back to 25% as we were uh, the first stages as we came back. So I'm glad she hasn't shut us down, but we're going to look and we're going to keep our eyes on things and uh, we'll make a call next week as far as the following Sunday. But this Sunday, we're going to be, uh, we're good to have church and we're going to do that. And I pray that you'll uh, make plans to either be here or follow us online. That's that's totally up to you. And I totally understand if you want to stay home, and it, you know, and it is a concern. So you do what you feel you need to do, amen? And nobody's going to hold that against you, amen? Especially your pastor, all right? So let's get into our word uh, with Pastor Raoul. And as we've talked this week, we've talked about usefulness, improvement, and correction. And uh, That correction part that we talked about yesterday is that, you know, because we want to be used by God and he has improved us by his action, not ours, uh, through the, the shed blood of Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit and his word, he has improved us in a way that we can correct the problems we have in our life. But as we go through life and we we see our need for correction, and we I, I pray that you do that. And I pray that, you know, as I, I work constantly trying to correct the things that maybe I don't do as well as I should, uh, sometimes it's just, not so much doing one of the don'ts on the list, uh, but sometimes it's just not doing one of the do's on the list. And I believe that is a big part of correction, uh, especially when it comes to a child of God and those that are active within the, the ministry of uh, the church. And here at First Baptist, uh, we have a lot to work to do. We got a lot of things we have to take care of. So I pray that everybody's doing their part. And if we're doing that, that brings us to a word uh, for today, and that's association. The things that we do, we find ourselves useful and we improved and we've corrected some things. But do we actually want to be associated with Jesus? Associated with the church? They, you know, there there are a lot of people out there that if you say you're part of a church or you 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 love Jesus, you you're got a little check beside your name and, and you're an odd duck. Uh, but I believe as we get in the latter days, we're going to see more and more of that. But I tell you what, I want to be associated with Jesus. And I hope that today, as we reflect to, to the things that we talked about Sunday and my fourth point, open the door of association. Uh, our verse for today is Amos 3, 3. Uh, do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? If you agree with your salvation in what Jesus did for you, and he has done his part, why do we not agree to be associated with him? And see, Jesus, he, he wants to be part of our lives. That's the very reason he came to earth. That's the very reason he became a man. And that's the very reason he had to be crucified. And he laid his life down that his blood would be shed, that we might have forgiveness. That's that improvement part, okay? And, and I... I wish we would agree more with what God says and understand that there's so much that he wants to include us in. As we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, he desires to use us and to uh, include us in his sovereign plan. That's the reason why he left us here. Amen. Uh, but our text was Revelation chapter three, verses 21 and 22 Sunday. And it says, the one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. Now, let that sink in for a minute. I will grant him to sit on with me on my throne. Man, can you imagine being joint heirs with Jesus, sitting on a throne to rule and reign? And he goes on to say, as I have conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear that what the Spirit says to the churches or the bride, if you will. That's what I'm focusing on is the bride. That's us. Are we associating ourselves with the Lord to the in a manner that reflects our relationship with Jesus? You know, the old saying goes, well, birds of a feather flock together. I believe as Christians, as we come together and we 
unite. We, we agree on the things of the word. Uh, as far as scripture says, it is the truth. Uh, Jesus even said that, you know, he is truth. And he, in our, in our text this, this week, in our message, it says that the a amen uh, is used in a, as a proper noun. The only place in all of scripture that it is used as a proper noun. And he said, the I, uh, amen has said it. That means the truth. Uh, and, you know, even though we're sinners, as Romans 5, 8 says, but God shows his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He includes us as far as he wants to be associated. He wants us to be associated with him. He died for us that we might have that that unity and that, you know, that that reconciliation we talked about the other day. I, I really uh, want to see us move forward in the association and, and that it's it's more it's we want to have more association with Jesus than we ever have more association with his bride his church and doing the things that can't help but show that we are associated or you know we're, we're quick to say we've accepted the Lord as our Savior uh, in John 3 we we read of Nicodemus Nicodemus met with Jesus and he said, we know you got to have to be from God. And, uh, but he did it in the shadows. <clears throat> Do we keep Jesus in the shadows? Do we go out in life and say, Hey, I go to church or, you know, you don't, you don't let it out that you're a Christian according to who you're out with. That association needs to be prevalent in everything that you say and do. It should be just, um, you can't hide it. Um, you know, I've heard it said that if, if it becomes a crime to be a Christian and they came and arrested you, would they find enough evidence uh, to convict you? And that's where we're at, that association. Do we freely share what the Lord has done in our lives? Are we associated with the conquering over evil? Um, you know, I can remember when I, I got right with the Lord and, you know, I stopped doing some things that I, I had been doing and I stopped hanging around with certain people. It mean, I didn't communicate because I wanted them to have the same thing I did. But I stopped doing some things and some of some of the so-called friends, you know, they they called me. You done become a holy roller. And uh, I like those kind of names. Now, I, I'm glad that people will call me that or a Bible thumper or whatever you want to call me. Jesus freak. I don't care what it is, as long as it shows my association that I'm willing to put myself in the circle with Jesus and be able to conquer evil. First Peter chapter five, we read start with verse six, it says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time, he may exalt you or lift you up, casting all your anxieties on him. These problems are gonna come, he's gonna lift you up. So cast those anxieties on him because he cares for you. And it goes on and it says, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I think it's, it's so awesome when we read this that God's mighty hands on us. He wants to lift us up and exalt us. And he wants us to cast all our cares, you know, the, the, everything that we come up against to him. He says he'll help us. But it, then it goes right in to be sober minded, be thinking about what it is, be be watchful because when you do this, the adversary, the devil, the evil one, he's going to come after you. Okay. He's prowling around seeking whom he may devour. I want to be an overcomer. Are you an overcomer? Are you overcoming those things that God has convicted? Remember we talked about yesterday, the conviction that comes and that God wants us to correct some things in our lives. When we do that, the devil doesn't like it. So let's let's make sure we're overcomers. And then we won't ask the question, are we associated uh, as a friend with Jesus? It's one thing to look at Jesus as a savior. It's one thing to look at Jesus as the son of God, but do you look at Jesus as a friend? And I believe sometimes we try to make it too religious, if you will, that we give up that ability to just it's just like we said in the verse uh, right before this, First Peter 5, verse 6. And can we just let our hair down? Can we just talk about whatever's in our lives with Jesus? 
And he wants to do the same with you. He wants to share with us what it is he's trying to do in our lives, but we're so stiff-necked and so worried about the association with religion or church. I want to be a friend to Jesus. You know, Jesus told us in John 15, starting with verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do not uh, do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You see, the Lord has associated himself with us. He died for us, even though we were sinners. Uh, or he loves us even though we're sinners. That's the reason he died for us. But not only that, but he has given us his word. The Father has given him the authority to include us. He gave us his word. He gave us the challenge. And if we agree with that and we're willing to do those things in which he tries to, uh, our first word of the, this week is being useful. If we're going to be useful, we've been improved. He's given us his word. But don't make it so rigid that you can't enjoy it. He's a friend. The stick, the stick is closer than a brother. Are we willing to do that for him? Uh, you know, we we can't get away from the Holy Spirit. God's in us. Amen. We know that that was one of the verses I had down, but it, it's it's just a given. We are the temple uh, of God. We we are, you know, we were, we were reading today and we're reading through the Bible in a couple of years and uh, we were reading today about Solomon and uh, you know the furniture the 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 temple had been done completed and and the Lord moved into the temple and he resided there with his people in Jerusalem that's the Old Testament because of Jesus and him willing to die and to include us he now resides in us let that sink in to a point that it's, it is an awesome responsibility, but do you hide that? Do you hide that, that part that shows our association with God, the Father? The Holy Spirit lives within us, and it's an association. Once we ask Jesus to be our Lord, he indwells us, or do we just hide him? We, we, we let him come out when we come to church on Sunday or when we're having our quiet time in the morning. Or do you walk hand in hand with him all the day, in the middle of the day, during lunch, when you're with your friends? Have you introduced your friend Jesus to them? I pray you have. And if we're going to associate with Jesus as a friend, then we need to associate with our home. Amen. I'm going to be preaching a message uh, I'm going to start a series this coming Sunday, and uh, I'm excited about it because I look forward to this every day, uh, but the bride is moving to heaven, amen? We're going to talk about moving day this Sunday. I pray you'll make plans to, to be here or listen to it, but that association that we have with Jesus, we need to also be uh, an association as ambassadors to heaven. Um, you know, we, we need to tell people we need to talk more about heaven. We need to tell more people about how to get there. That association that we have with the kingdom of heaven. Do you have enough knowledge about the, the word of God or what the Bible says about heaven that you would can tell us, you know, is if uh, if you knew where there was a, a cool place to eat or something like that, you would learn about it. You'd go check, check it out and then you'd tell all your friends about it if it was really good. Heaven is, we can't even imagine what the Lord is going to do for us there in heaven. And uh, in Revelation chapter 22, we read this. It says, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. The night will be no more. 
They will need no light of lamp or, or sun, for the Lord God will be their light. They will reign forever and ever. That is an awesome picture, a snapshot of what we've got to look forward to. Can you tell somebody, don't you want to share that with somebody? I pray that you will. You know, the associations that we work so hard for and, and with today, uh, the association with our work or uh, what, what group we like to hang out with, are they going to last forever? Being associated with Jesus will have eternal and royal benefits. Just as we talked, he wants to share his throne with you. But you have to do these things. You have to be associated with him. You have to overcome. You have to do it God's way and keep his commandments. Show your association with Jesus. 1 John 3 verse 24 says, And the one who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. In other words, the Lord, if we keep his commandments, we're going to abide in the Lord. And the Lord's going to abide in us. We know by this that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So back to our verse of the day, Amos 3.3. 3, Do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet. We have to agree and we have to show our association with Jesus. And allow him to associate us with the Father. That comes from living a testimony and living a life that invites people and points to heaven through the door that we're going to talk about Sunday. The door. That door's name is Jesus. Amen. The only way you can get to heaven is through Jesus. You have to be associated with him. Whether you, I don't see, you know, I sort of say whether you like it or not. I don't know how you cannot like it. You need to love it. Jesus loved us far more than we love anything else in this world. So my attitude adjustment is, let me be just a, the biggest billboard I can be for Jesus. I don't want anybody to try to guess whether or not I'm associated with Jesus. I don't want anybody to try to uh, say, well, you're trying real hard. No, I, I, I want it to be very evident that I love Jesus. My life is his. And I'm an ambassador for the great kingdom of heaven where I will spend eternity. I hope you'll be there with me, okay? Uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings, and, and Lord, let us be associated with you. Let us share you with everybody we come in contact with, with our walk, with our talk, and Lord, I pray that you would touch your people, and I pray that you would give us a, a sense of urgency that we're running out of time, and, and Lord, we, we look forward to seeing you. I, I, I know I, I want to see you today, uh, but Lord, I pray that you'd give us the ability to to, to share what you've done for us and to share the joy that we have and the love that you have shown us. It's the only way we know how to love is because you first loved us. I pray that you'd be with us. Help us through these dark times we're in. And uh, I just thank you for your, your, your love and your protection. And I, I just pray that you'd be with all our people, keep them safe from this virus. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'd protect us as we move forward, that we will do things in accordance to your perfect will. Your sovereign calendar must be kept. And I pray that we will be yielded. I pray that we would uh, be busy. And I pray and, and I look forward to seeing your son very soon, face to face. And we ask all these things in his precious name. Amen. As I said, please be here Sunday if you can. Um, like restrictions haven't been put down until Monday. Uh, we'll look at the following week. We'll see how things are going. A lot of a lot of things. We're just we're just going to be watching it. I'll be I'll be re watching it every day, and I'll let you know via email, or I'll get on here and tell you on Facebook uh, or YouTube. But I tell you what, we're just going to keep looking for Jesus. We're going to keep doing what He's asked us to do. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Hope to see you Sunday, whether in person or online. Uh, but as I've, I've asked time and time again, let me know. Just put a like that you, you're watching or, uh, you know, just make a comment. I pray that you listen to this Sunday. You, this Sunday, moving day, we're going we're gonna to talk about the rapture. I pray that you'll be here to hear that, okay? Y'all take care and have a good weekend. Love you. And, um, just be blessed. Amen.